Welcome back everybody. We are going to do some resin today. And I'm still playing around with the lighting in here, so forgive me if it's a little off. So I already have about three ounces of stone coat countertop epoxy mixed up. Um, I usually use, for cups and stuff, I usually use faux rizzle because it's thick, but for which stone coat works great for that too. Um, but for stuff like this, I like to use stone coat because I like it to continue to move. So I have mixed it until it's clear. And I have probably mixed up extra. So my plan today is to do at least one of these with you and show you the colors versus boring you with doing all of them. We'll see how that goes. If I have leftover epoxy, I have um, some coasters that need some love. So we're using all resin art today. First color we're using is Sangria, which is a luster pigment. It means it's really, really sparkly. It has big chunks of flake in it. Look at that, beautiful. And so these are made by Color Art. Uh, we're also using, sorry, my jars are dirty from resin fingers. Uh, purple sapphire and just one tip I always put something on the top so I know exactly what it looks like um, that's also from color art this is puppy love it's a beautiful reddish pink color we're using it just a smidge of spiced ginger because it's so pretty look at that and then Indian spice so <clears throat> save 20% off anything on the color art website with my coupon code, which is Mandy1120, also in the description box below. Um, there's some really amazing stuff coming out. Um, there's a new pigment line coming out um, that you can pre-order now. And you can save 20% off the new pigment line with my coupon code and anything else you want to get at the same time, of course. Sorry, I just got something in this mold and I'm trying to clean it. It's probably because I was showing you all the dusties. Um, and with the new pigment line called um, Putting on the Glitz, you get a 13th one free if you pre order by December 9th. So I'm going to show you these colors. And from what I have seen of them, oh my gosh, they're so beautiful. Um, and you can use primary elements in resin, but you have to use um, an art fluid first to wet them and mix them up and then you can do it so um, you can't just throw them in resin like you can these but these on the other hand are phenomenal like there's it's still not mixed up all the way so I'm giving it a good stir and it probably needs some more epoxy but I'm gonna get it mixed first But these flakes in here are just, look at that. So this needs a little bit more epoxy. So what I'm going to do today is a puddle pour. I've never done these that way before. So I don't know how it's going to turn out. But I'm using this flower coaster mold. I've never used it before. Um, ooh, that's beautiful. I'm going to let that sit for a little bit. Um, and absorb the epoxy. This is the the purple one. I think it's called I already forgot. Fuchsia. No, purple sapphire. Generally I mix it with just a little bit of epoxy first and then I add to it. That way you can always add to it but well, look at that. Like I have used some nice high quality micas before and dyes and all that stuff but nothing quite compares to color art that's going to need some more but so my plan is to put the sangria down first and then the pink I think the puppy love which is this one 
The reason I'm doing this with you guys is I always like to see the colors up close. So. Look at that. I've actually put this on a marble cup and it is a beautiful color. So that's going to need more as well. This spiced pumpkin is like this, ooh, it's like a gorgeous, um, like almost like a fall orange. Sorry, I just noticed a piece of my puppy's hair in my epoxy cup. I was like, no, no. And I am very careful to not like wear clothes that I have been wearing when I hug my little dog. So this is spiced ginger. So I like that it's like a deep gold meets like a pumpkin color. Because you really could use it as a gold too. Alright, and then this one is Indian Spice. So this is going to be our gold. So my plan is to finish with this one in the middle. I probably won't need as much of this one as I will the other ones. So I may have probably put a lot in there. And I also kind of wanted it to be a little bit um, more transparent because I don't want it to stick out like, like just crazy. But in a pinch, I can always add some clear. Now we're going to go back and just add some resin where we need to. This is one of my favorite ones. And you know, I almost didn't get this one because I was like, eh, sangria. But it, it's probably one of my favorites of all of them. Like, you just cannot, the light cannot even show you guys how beautiful that is. So... I'm just going to add some more in each cup. And hopefully this works out. You know, I want the colors to blend a little, but I don't want them to blend so much that, like, they have no individuality. So I think that's kind of a delicate balance. I don't, I don't know that we can perfectly do that. So, and these coasters are big y'all so that's probably like five inches so I imagine each one of these would probably need about half an ounce on its own and I only mixed up three ounces all together I know I probably don't need three ounces but I will probably need something close to that so the other thing I like about stone coat is you have like a super long working time. Um, like when I'm starting to work on a project like this, I don't want to be like anxious and nervous that I'm going to run out of time. And like I use faux rizzle as well and I love it. But I have mixed up two ounces of epoxy before just to put on coasters, which is not a lot. Not a time consuming project in other words. And I have had it, <laughs> like, cure before I could even spread it over coasters. And it has a pretty long working time, too. So I super love this color, but I will say I'm kind of wishing I had just stuck to the violet and the sangria and the golds. And I'm starting to wonder if I shouldn't like layer that one in between somehow. So I'm second guessing my plan in other words. So hopefully I don't screw this up. But my, my original plan was to do the sangria, then the purple, then the puppy love and then the orange but if I look at these not the orange the spice pumpkin if I look at these they do okay side by side I really love the way these two look side by side because I've done it on a cup before 
but I would say these two are probably more gradual. So I guess we'll stick with my original idea. And I wonder if we have enough. It feels like we don't. So I think we're probably going to need the most of the sangria, second most of the purple sapphire. I don't know why I keep calling it violet, but I'll try to put everything in the description box for y'all. I really appreciate that because um, when I go to buy things from Color Art, obviously now I have a lot of the things. When I was first starting though, I would have so much stuff in my cart and I'd have to narrow it down. And when people showed me what they used and told me the colors, that helped me a lot because then I was like, okay, well I have a color similar to that. So if I wanted to narrow it down, I could start here and then get that color later. Look at that. Like you can't make that up. So I think the colors we need the most of are those maybe a little bit more of the spiced ginger do i call it spiced pumpkin sorry y'all i'm really tired it's spiced ginger and i don't think i don't think i'm going to need all of this but and here's my dilemma i hate to mix it all up and not use it and then I also hate to get that far and then have to stop and add to something and have it run the risk of it not being the same for all of them. So that's the challenging part. I think the Indian spice is good. You can't make up how pretty that is. Look at that. Okay. So let's just get to it. And then, <clears throat> if I have to, I'll improvise. What I have done in the past is I have not mixed up enough, and then I make my coasters too thin. So that's what I want to not do. My very first geode, if you ever saw that video, my very first geode coasters were so thin, and a friend of mine bought them so sweet of her but they and they were functional but they were like super thin and so I was like yikes I don't want to do that again just by because I was just thinking about okay get stuff in the cups but I don't know that I was fully pondering like fill the mold maybe not to the top but you know you need it to be thick <clears throat> Okay, a little more puppy love. All right, I have no idea what I'm doing, you guys. So, okay, that's how we practice. And I just said I was going to do just one with you, but um, that's also not really very practical because if I am going to run out of epoxy halfway in the middle, I won't know that until <laughs> I put stuff in all of them, right? Ding dong. So I might have lied by accident. Okay, this popsicle is real sad. All right, so I'm going to start with this one. And you guys can't see everything that I'm doing because I'm not going to pick these things up. But... I'm just putting a little puddle in all four of them and trying to make it the same size. And now I'm finding out that it's not the same size. So I'm just going to keep going until I run out of this one. Like this color is so beautiful. Okay. 
Okay, we definitely have good foundation of this one. I like to use these little Dixie cups, the little paper cups, because I can make them, I can kind of get the pointy edge action from them. Whereas with the plastic ones, I can't. And I don't know if you know this or not. I don't remember where I learned this, so hopefully it's not untrue. But epoxy cures faster in plastic than paper. So if you mix up a big batch and you need more working time, then you're a little better off using paper. Sorry about my reach. All right. So next up is... This guy. I'm starting to feel nervous about my decision to do a pedal pour. I also just dripped a bunch. And I didn't try to pop any bubbles before I poured it either. I'm just a mess. Also, what you can't see is my table's not level, so I've got this wayward one over here not spreading out equally. I might just have to deal with some of that, huh? This guy he doesn't even want to play in the right sandbox over here like that's how you fluid art will really mess with your desire for symmetry and control you know what I mean it's, those are just not things that really happen in the fluid art life so I just have to know that they're all going to do what they want, and that's part of our learning process. This one's real weird how it's not spreading out this way. Maybe I'll just turn it around so I can start to do a better job. And this color is overpowering my uh, sangria a little bit. But I'm pretty confident that they will merge in their own way. I kind of wish I had picked some that are all like the super sparkly, but I I kind of wanted the different. You know what I mean? Like some are a little bit more pearlescent. I mean, they're all super sparkly. Kind of goes without saying, but I'm not really worried about the weird lines I'm creating because this is not the last layer. So if you guys are like, um, that's gross looking, you may not even be able to see it. All right, so we got this down. I keep going back to grab some more of the sangria. But I think I just need to chill. You know who does beautiful, like, puddle pour coasters? Petra. Hers always turn out so beautiful. I, and I really probably should have used some alcohol inks, which, if you don't know, you can create alcohol inks with resin arts pigments. I also have a video where I did a hydro dip with resin art pigments, and I mixed them into Marabou clear marbling paint. So, you know, there's endless possibilities. I don't think I'm going to torch this because I'm not having the greatest success with this particular person's molds when I torch them, not getting messed up. I mean, she does say not to torch them, but I'm like, that's kind of difficult to, to do because sometimes torching is needed. Plus, sometimes I want to use a heat gun to create effects in a mold and I mean, not necessarily heat it up a lot, but kind of makes me feel like it ties my hands a little bit. But when I don't listen, I tend to ruin the mold, so 
I might have to listen. And I went and put my popsicle stick in the dirty rain. Duh. Sorry if you guys can't see everything I'm doing. I don't want to pick them up because then they get all crazy. There's a couple of these that there must be resin drips or something on this table that are making the table uneven. So there's a couple of them that keep kind of favoring one side or another. And that's kind of frustrating me. So I just keep picking it up and turning it around, like, you know, evenly distribute. So now we're going to use the spiced ginger. I don't know why I always want to call it pumpkin. It's not like super orange. So I'm kind of curious how this plays with these guys. Now I need to be a little bit more careful about my center in a minute. See what I mean about stone coke though? You see how it just keeps moving? That's what I really like when you're doing this kind of art because it will create effects kind of on its own, which is one of the things that they always say when you're doing countertops. And my husband and I did a table last year for my mother-in-law and it did. The design kept moving and sort of like straying out and feathering out and it was honestly kind of cool so when you want your epoxy to keep doing that i think that that is one of the perks of using stone coat is it creates these like almost like fingerlings or i don't know the right word I think julie cuts refers to them as striations i don't know if that's what it's called or not but they sort of like branch out and they're really cool looking. So I kind of like these. I love the colors. So last but not least is Indian Spice. And so my thought is that this will sort of fade into that gold. But here's where I want to be a little bit more careful about my center. Look at the sparkle on that bad boy. And then, now we're going to see if I have enough epoxy or not. It's starting to look like I don't, which is making me a little bit nervous. Because by now, we should be at the edge. And, look what I just did. It's okay. So I'm a little nervous about that. So we can do one of two things. We can add the clear, like this one, this one looks okay. But the others are not very full. So that's what makes me a little nervous. So. I have an idea. And my idea is either A, add more gold to the center of all of them, or B, add more sangria to the center of all of them. I'm kind of leaning toward the gold because it looks kind of like the center of a flower, but so like this one looks okay, right? I don't know how deep it is and that's what kind of worries me is it seems like, like it's not very deep. So I feel like if I add a lot of gold, and I wish y'all could tell me what you think. 
I feel like if I add a lot of gold, the gold is just going to dominate the other colors. So I have one over here that y'all can't really see, and I'm afraid to get lint anywhere, but this is like kind of being swallowed up by the center. So I can get this guy covered, no problem. But I also just kind of messed up my center to do that. Like, now my center doesn't look flowery at all. But I also kind of like the way it looks better than the flower. And this one is covered, so maybe I just needed to give it a minute. This one is covered. I don't know how deep it is. That's one of my concerns. And this one is covered. But I almost feel like the center design that I had in mind is not working that great with this mold, even though you'd think it would work really well. It feels like it's just kind of making it look like a sun. So I think I'm actually going to add sangria. As tempting as it is to not do that, I think that's what I'm going to put in there for a couple reasons. So where the colors kind of gotten lost by the middle being weird, it should help. And um, there's an edge back here that's really sort of missing it because the pink sort of took over. So I feel like Ooh, I think I just got a flake of that. I feel like doing this will maybe give me a chance to fix that. I think this is going to continue to move, and the gold is going to kind of spread out from the middle. I would, I'm tempted to torch it, but I, like I said, I'm having to learn my lesson. I think I might even mix the sangria into this gold cup. And there's a place right out on the edge of one of these that really could use a little more sangria. So we'll see. We'll see how I get this done, y'all. Either way, I, I still think they're beautiful. But puddle pours are kind of a wild card for me, you know. Honestly, I love the puppy love color, but I also f kind of feel like had I maybe not included it, it could have gotten different effects. The other thing I can do, if this idea doesn't pan out, is I can wreck it. I can do some twirly poos in there. I mean, why not? Okay, so what you can't see is that I'm kind of adding a little sangria to this edge where that pink color sort of took over. And I'm expecting that it will merge a little bit, but it may not. Okay, we'll see. It's an experiment. I don't think I have it mixed up enough yet. When those flakes are really big like that, like don't, especially this seems to be true of the reds and browns in both the primary elements and the pigment line, don't hesitate to over stir to make sure they're good and mixed up because they have those bigger flakes So like I said, it seems to be true of the both the reds and the browns. So like in the in the primary elements, the love struck and the hot cinnamon are like that. Um, some people say the same about ballroom red. Ballroom red mixes up pretty easily for me, but it's a favorite of mine, so maybe I'm just used to that. I thought about going 
them live. So uh, Color Art does have a resin Facebook group for resin art. And it's not only for their products, it's for resin artists to share their work. Um, I will try to remember to link it here. We are probably going to run some contests in the near future. Let people kind of highlight their resin work. I briefly thought about doing this live, but I didn't like announce it or anything ahead of time. So it would be like, maybe not the best day to do that. Plus I have a lot to do tonight, so I wouldn't really be able to answer the questions because I can't really see them without bringing my laptop and all that. But I probably will do some like that. Okay, I think we've got this mixed up. Sorry about this being like a super long video. All right. Great. I didn't mean to do that. I wish I could show you guys up close um, what this is doing kind of on its own. And I keep freaking dropping pieces of it where it doesn't go. I'm just probably going to have to be okay with that. All I did there is I basically just kind of blew it into that spot. It's still going to show. But... So I also spread it out a little bit. So one of the things I was saying about stone coat is how it reacts kind of on its own. So there's this guy over here that you probably can't see and I just messed up the effects of it too. Where Immediately when I put that color in, the gold started to react with it. And it actually is creating this really cool, almost like the center of a flower look. Except I just drug some epoxy where it doesn't belong, of course. Now I'm trying to fix it. Which I may not entirely be able to do that, but so part of me wants to wreck it and see what it looks like, but then part of me is like really digging what it's doing. So really torn. I'm trying to put some of this color where that color just sort of gotten eaten up. This doesn't really need it. So what's a bummer is where I put this color on the top here, it really kind of messed up the effect it was giving us, which was really neat. And I'm completely out of epoxy now, so I don't really know how these are going to turn out. But I'm going to move this around in hopes that it will keep doing it again. And all I'm doing, because I know you probably can't see it, is I'm gently just blowing on the hard line I have in the middle here. So it will perhaps merge a little bit with that gold again. Because what happened is it was doing a really good job of that, and then I noticed that I got epoxy where it didn't go, and I tried to cover it up. And instead of the sangria going into the puddle, it started to kind of lay on top of it. So let me show you the one I'm having trouble with. It's this guy. 
right here. This was like really nice looking and now it's crazy looking. So I'm trying to see if it will kind of create that effect again. But it may not, so maybe a lesson learned. And I'm wrecking the design a lot by picking it up. So I'm on the fence now about these. I can either leave them alone and see what happens, see what they do, because I really kind of wanted them to look like flowers, obviously. Or I can get a toothpick and like wreck it because they're not all going to look the same now. I mean, it will still have some unique effects, but without having a round center, this like this, me picking that one up was a really bad move. <sighs> I wish y'all could tell me what to do. And I don't think I can do anything to make it better. So, I'm starting to think what we should have done in the middle is more gold. And I just spilled more epoxy in there. So I think I'm going to try the toothpick idea. I used to have some in here. I don't think I have it. So... I think a popsicle stick might be too extreme. That's what I have in here though, so. I don't know you guys. So the one that I'm really worried about, oh you can see this, you probably saw my big head too. The one I'm really worried about is this one. I don't know if that's going to look nice or not. These may be um, a terrible idea. Just gone horribly wrong. Hmm. That looks probably worse than it did before. So let's see. And I didn't make them all go the same way. So it looks like like a nightmare before Christmas flower or something. Like with all these weird like fingerlings. I don't know. This is like a really bad experiment. <laughs> um, this one kind of looks like a starfish. Looks a lot more intentional than this guy right here. This guy looks bad. This one like kind of looks like a sun, you know? And then this one. If nothing else, you guys got to see how pretty the colors are before I mess them up. I don't know what I just dropped or where it came from. I know I see a bubble that I can't hit with the torch. I think that was a resin drip. I don't know about this. This is like the weirdest experiment ever. Well, that's not true. I'm sure I've done worse.
it's kind of a bummer though is the reason I'm doing coasters today is I'm trying to get ready for this market day that we have this weekend and I thought oh these will be beautiful and the idea in my head would have been great if this hadn't happened so I think that someone will probably like these the way they are but there's something real crazy about this guy so I'm gonna see if I can't bring him under a little bit more control. It's because I kept picking it up to show you guys what was going on with it. And so now like there's like this blob in the middle that none of the other ones have. And I think I think it's gonna continue to move and sort of absorb itself. But also like I'm a, I wanna help it, but every time I pick it up it gets worse. And I really wanted to paint right here tonight. And that may not happen either, because if I pick it up, it gets worse. So I don't know. Anyway, if you are still watching, you are so nice and so patient. And we appreciate your support so much either way. And, um... For all of us, our faithful subscribers, we are so thankful for you. And if you are not yet a subscriber, um, please consider subscribing and hit that notification bell. I promise things are not always this crazy looking. But, you know, I think one of the things that I have always learned from is when people share their fails, too, and like when things don't go right. Oh, I really want to torch this. So, I appreciate you guys watching. I know I'm not supposed to. Just need to. Just like that. Let's see if I don't ruin another one. Alright, thanks guys so much for watching. Let, let me know what you think of my crazy experiment. Have a great day. Thank you again. Okay, I didn't show the unmolding because I wasn't sure if I was going to share these because they turned out sort of crazy. But they've grown on me. So here is the finished product. Pardon the glare, I just wiped them off. But composition isn't great, but the colors are super great. This was the one we had so much trouble with. So... I decided to release it anyway just because the colors are so pretty and uh, these will be up in our Etsy store. So yeah, thanks for watching everybody.